tell us uh, briefly and maybe illustrate on the piano uh, just the the essential differences in in, uh, in say bebop and maybe the earlier styles you know the essential things that you oh, learned goodness. and you've applied is there, is there any uh, just a well I could tell a couple of things Oh, you know that bebop is always in four-four time. Right. Where earlier is is uh, very often in two time, uh, and that's that's one thing. Um, then there's different vocabulary. It's um, at least speaking in a different dialect, if not a different language. Louis Armstrong would do. Too bad I can't vibrate on that note. No, but you can play it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and Dizzy. That's a different, almost a different language. And uh, I found that the more things I could learn, the more often employed I was. So I took that as a principle and tried to learn as many different ways of playing and eventually of writing, too, as I could. It was just uh, an employment. Barry Harris is still teaching. Oh, yeah. You know, and, and he's one of the bebop guys, you know, and he's got a very organized system for, you know, teaching all of that stuff. But you, having come up in the, in the era, did you actually have... Uh, a, a teacher specifically, or did you, you know, did you have, did you learn from theory, or how did you actually? Almost completely, I learned these things from listening, and from talking with other musicians who were in a similar stage of development. We hung out together. There was a certain amount of theory, I suppose, presented in uh, in certain magazines like Downbeat, but mostly it was just listen and be smart and try to figure out. Why? Many of the bebop harmonies came ultimately from Art Tatum. A great many. If you could slow him down. <laughs> did you see him? Yeah. Art Tatum? Did yeah. You, did you? Uh, I had the great privilege of playing with Tony Scott's quartet in Cafe Society for two or three weeks where Tatum was the guest, was the, the attraction. And we would play uh, dance music for a while, uh, jazz-inflected dance music uh, with Tony. And uh, the time came for the floor show and we would end and, and they would wheel out the grand piano, the piano that I was playing I would get away from it, they would reel it, wheel it out on the floor and Tatum would come out, I think he would be guided out, and he would just uh, absolutely dazzle us for a show of 45 minutes or so. So yes, I did get to uh, know him a little bit in those days. Uh, not much, I was practically tongue-tied in his presence in any case. Seemed like a very nice fellow though. I didn't really know him as well as uh, other people have uh, established that they did. Did you also uh, have contact with uh, some of the older, like the Stride guys? Did you know Lucky Roberts, for instance? Um, did you ever see him or Don Lambert and, and uh, um, some of those other people? Well, I did get to know uh, Willie the Lion. Right. Uh, my, our old mutual friend, Mike Lipskin, uh, introduced me to him, and I remember going up to uh, the Lion's apartment one time and hanging out with him. And uh, I, I, there was a, a, a little place in Greenwich Village called the Pied Piper. Max Kaminsky had a band there. And the band included either Willie or James B. Johnson. One or the other would play intermission piano and the other fellow would play in the band. I think 
think more often it was Willie playing with the band. But at any rate, I went down there and sat in one night. So to that extent, I... I so you knew James P. Yeah. Well, you know, I can't say a, a, to, to know somebody is, is a very ambiguous word. But I, I, I heard him live, so, let's say that. And he signed the menu, menu once to my uh, then girlfriend, since then wife. So we have that somewhere. Yeah. I've always thought that Jelly Roll Morton, who I know is a, is a favorite of yours and of, and of all yeah. of us, um, he was playing a whole band. His, he was playing right. trombone licks with his left hand. which makes him very different from James P, who was kind of regularly in that, and not nearly as wild with his left hand. He was a whole, he was a rhythm section. With the bass there, a little later on a guitar or a banjo. And of course, different things in the right hand too. Jelly Roll, Jelly Roll, if you extend it, I've always had this theory, it turns into Earl Hines. Huh. Yeah. No. And Hines seems to introduce runs that became such a feature of Tatum. Uh, became a specialty of one of Heinz's successors, if you want to use it chronological term. Uh, softened and less explosive. Uh. But Tatum, Tatum was very much along these lines, but he went much farther harmonically. And Teddy was, I don't think Teddy was interested in things. Or at any rate, not nearly in the sonority that Tatum. Tatum liked to do dramatic things like that. Take you a while to figure that out? Uh, I learned that it didn't much matter what note you ended on up there. It's liable to be out of, out of tune anyhow. And uh, it was the dramatic gesture. Like that. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Although I think I really give Tatum credit for being more accurate than I can be. But uh, he had this sonority when he played less boldly. Uh, of course, you can, you can accuse him accused Tatum of being pretentious, as, as his critics did, and of overusing these devices. But it's such wonderful results that you forgive him for a little bit of uh, boasting when he was playing. 
because uh, he could get down to it and, and like nobody else. Uh, but the, the, the beboppers were something else. Beboppers were all, all uh, relating themselves one way or another to Charlie Parker. And it implied, being a bebop pianist implied that you were always being accompanied by a bass and a drums. Right. Uh, or at least a bass and, pro and not a guitar. It didn't, wasn't, wasn't natural for them to have a guy strumming along, except at the beginning when they were trying to transform themselves from swing pianists into, into boppers. Uh, so that the best solution to playing solo piano, if you wanted to play with an element of bop, was to do the sort of line, uh, the method invented by, by uh, Dave McKenna, who simply played bass with his left hand and then comped in between, so it sounded like there was a third hand. Right. So he... From that you get into uh, all the blues things which really have a background in uh, blues piano and boogie woogie of the 1920s when, when Oscar Peterson would do. Uh, that's really, really ancient boogie woogie like. That kind of thing. and. Uh, I see these things as having a, more of a relationship with each other than being standoffs in a perennial battle. And if I do anything, I guess I try to put them together.